What are you doing? Kid, I'm about to fly a very, very expensive quadcopter in a very, very dangerous location for some very, very important people. How'd you even get onto this set? Security! Security! Tom's gonna love this. Arming! <laughs> oh, that, that was it. That was the funny shot right there. Today I got a request from somebody to do something that I think is a terrible idea. I think it's even unsafe. And I told him that, and he said, I understand that, but I still want to know how to do it. And I thought, okay, I will rise to the challenge. And what he wants to do is, he wants to be able to arm his quad normally, but only disarm when the throttle is all the way down. Because he's worried about hitting his disarm switch when he doesn't mean to. And even though I think this is a bad idea and unsafe, I started thinking about how would you do it? And I realized it's actually a great opportunity to dive into OpenTX or EdgeTX, whichever you've got, and teach you how to set up some more complicated switch logic. So we're gonna go through the process in this video together. I'm gonna show you how to do it, at least if I can figure it out. But I'm also gonna show you the process I use to figure out how to do it. I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. Now, anytime we're dealing with logical conditions of any kind, we're going to end up here in the logical switches screen of our radio. And logical switches are like physical switches that you can flip, except instead of flipping them with your fingers, they flip themselves in response to some precondition that you define. Uh, and one of the logical switches I know I'm going to need is a logical switch that tells me when my throttle is all the way up or down. So I'm just starting to kind of arrange the things I'm going to need to know about, the conditions I'm going to want to be aware of in order to then like make the logic work the way I want it to work. And since having the throttle be all the way down is one of the conditions we, we're going to rely on, we need to make a logical switch for that. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to click on, well, I'm just going to use L01. There's like, I think there's 32 or 64 of them. I don't remember the number, but if you've got some of them that are already in use, you can just go down a couple and then pick an empty one. And the function is going to be a, let's say it's a less than X. So this logical switch is gonna become true when one thing is less than another thing. Well, what's the thing that is going to be less than the other thing? That thing is going to be the throttle. In fact, if I just move the throttle stick here, I think it should pick it up, yeah. See, when I move the throttle, it goes to throttle. So you can just move the control that you're, you don't have to scroll through the list if you don't want to. When the throttle is less than, and we're gonna put this at, well, minus 100 is all the way down, zero is the midpoint, and plus 100 is all the way up. Uh, that's a little weird. You would think it would go like zero to 100 or something, but it comes from the days of servos. And so minus 100 will be all the way down. Let's say if the throttle is less than, uh, let's say minus 95, you know, close to the bottom. We could set that however we want. And that's all we need to do. That's all we need to do. We can back out. And what we can see, if I just move this down slightly, is that when the throttle is all the way down, that colors in or on a black and white screen radio, you're gonna see it go bold. And that's indicating that that condition is true. That switch is being flipped. And now we can build more logic on whether L01 is true. So I'm gonna go back to the mixes screen. And for channel five, what we're gonna do is, let's say that we've got high is arm and low is disarmed. So plus 100 is gonna be armed and minus 100 is gonna be disarmed. We'll need to set that up in the flight controller to match that, but we could of course do that. So what I'm gonna say is, instead of having the source for this mix be SF and it moves with the switch, we're gonna change the source to max. Where do we, what's the simplest way to get to max? There it is, it's right here. Oh, I used the touch screen, that's a little bit cheating. You can't just scroll through the list and find it. The source max means simply that the channel will output a constant value at all times. Uh, why is it max then, not constant? I don't know, it just is. And the weight is gonna be 100%, which means the channel will always be at 100%, which means the quadcopter will always be armed. Isn't that great? 
obviously we're not done yet. What we're gonna do is we're gonna make this mix be conditional on a switch position, and it's gonna be our arm switch. And the way we do that is we go down here to the switch parameter, and what the switch parameter does, I'm just gonna click the jog wheel once, and I'm gonna flip switch SF, and it's gonna highlight there to SF up, which is my arm condition. And what that does is that makes the mix only be true, only be outputting to the channel when the switch is in that position. So what we're saying is when this switch SF is in the up position, output a value of plus 100 to this channel. Well, that's that's just what the switch does under normal operation. When it's in the up position, it outputs 100. When it's in the down position, it outputs minus 100. We've kind of just replicated the switch's normal behavior in a more complicated and confusing way. Don't worry. We're going to get there. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the multiplex parameter from add to replace. And what that does is, if we back out here to the mixes screen, when there is more than one mixer line on a single channel, so this is on channel five, we're controlling the output of channel five. When there's more than one mixer line on a single channel that is active at the same time, then normally they're added up together. They, they add up together to make the final output value of the channel. Uh, but when you set that multiplex value to replace, it means that the last one in line will replace any of the previous ones. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna make multiple mixer lines, one for each of the possible conditions that the quad could be in. All right, let's continue. I think I'm gonna make a mistake here, but I'm gonna walk into the mistake so you can see me make it and see some of the pitfalls of trying to make this kind of logic. So the next thing I need to do is I need to be able to disarm. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, insert after, I'm gonna make a new mixer line. The source for this mixer line is gonna be max again. And this time, the weight is gonna be minus 100. Now the chat, that's gonna be our disarm position, okay? And in this case, our switch. Now we could set that switch to be switch SF down. And now we have literally just recreated the normal, the switch is a plus 100 or minus 100. That's not what we're gonna do. Instead, what we wanna do is we wanna combine some logic here, okay? We only want it to disarm when the throttle is down. So we're gonna go back to our logical switches. What we wanna do is we wanna combine two logical switches. We want a switch that is true, is activated when the throttle is down and the disarm switch is in the disarm position. Now we could do that by combining two lines, but it turns out you can actually put an and condition on a single line. So let's take this LO1 switch and the simplest thing I can think of to do right now is to say, this is switch is gonna be true when the throttle is less than negative 95 and switch SF is in the down position. In other words, this logical switch will tell us, no, don't disarm, throttle's raised. No, th this switch will tell us when the user is trying to indicate that they want to disarm. Okay, fine, there's a problem here. If you see it coming, tell me down in the comments the mistake that I'm making right now. I'm gonna tell you in just a minute. When I, when I finish this section. So here we are in the mixes, and we've got this first line, which arms the quad when the switch is in the up position, and this line is gonna disarm the quad, and the condition for that is not gonna be switch SF down, but rather it is gonna be switch LO1, logical switch LO1. When LO1 becomes true, it means we want to disarm. It means the throttle is down, and it means that the uh, arm switch is in the disarmed position. Oh, fantastic. And it's going to appear like it works as expected. Now let's take a look here. So this line is yellow. That means that line is activated. And in fact, hang on, let's go in. Here's what channel five is doing at this exact moment. So if I arm, it goes to armed. You can see it's gone all the way up. If I raise the throttle, now the throttle is up. If I try to disarm, oh, what's happened here? The channel has gone to mid position. What's happened here is that none of the conditions that I have defined are actually true. And so the channel has defaulted to the mid position. We need a sticky switch. A sticky switch is a logical switch that holds it, that becomes enabled on one condition and holds that value until a different condition clears it. Um, so for LO2, our function is gonna be sticky and variable one is gonna be switch SF in the arm position, and variable two is gonna be switch LO1. 
So this switch LO2 is going to become enabled based on this condition when I flip the arm switch. But now if I raise the throttle and flip the disarm switch, notice that it has not disabled because switch LO1 has not become enabled yet. So switch LO2 will disable when LO1 becomes enabled which will only happen when I lower the throttle and have the switch in the disarm position. I think I've done it. Let's check this logic again. I'm going to arm. I'm going to raise throttle and fly. I'm going to disarm. And then I lower throttle. And now, let's check it in a different order. Arm, raise throttle, lower throttle, disarm. Works as expected. Raise throttle. LO2, it's behaving as expected. Source, max, weight 100 switch, we're going to just have a max of 100 with the switch of, now can I have logical switches? Yes. LO2 on, and then we will add another line, and then we will insert before a source max weight minus 100. So the default position for the channel will be disarmed, and then we will change this multiplex to replace which will mean that we will replace it with armed when switch LO2 becomes active. And that, I think, is going to work. So channel 5 will be at a value of minus 100, which is disarmed all the time, except when LO2 becomes activated. And we've set up LO2 so that it will activate and deactivate according to the logic that we want. <laughs> I'm so excited that we figured it out. Like always, in the end, it's simpler than it seemed like it was going to be. But also, there's a big disclaimer around this whole video that I'm going to give you in just a second. But first, I want to tell you about how you can support the kind of content I'm making here. And no, there are no sponsors for this video. The only sponsor of this video is you, if you decide that you want to support me today. Patreon is a website where you can subscribe to me for as little as $2 a month or as much as you want to subscribe to. The amount is totally up to you, uh, however much you feel like I earned. If you value this content, if you learn something from this, if I'm helping you get more out of your radio, or especially if you're that one guy whose specific question triggered this video, I would love to have you as a patron. If today's the day that I've earned it, there's a link down in the video description to patreon.com, my, my, my site. Uh, and if today's not the day I earned it, then I'll just keep making content and hopefully you'll keep watching it and maybe that day will come. The big disclaimer around this whole video is that anytime you're dealing with arming and disarming, the consequences of making a mistake are huge and the quad could arm when you don't intend it to or refuse to disarm when you need it to. And uh, although I think this logic is correct, I can't be 100% sure that there's not some edge case I've failed to consider. And therefore, if you follow along with this, then the consequences of that are on you. And I don't recommend that you follow along with this. I think you should just have a simple arm switch that you know click, click, works and doesn't work. But that's up to you. You're grown up. You can make your own decisions. If you like this video, I've got another cool video about OpenTX and EdgeTX where I show you how to turn your trim switches do you, who uses trim switches? Okay, airplane pilots, raise your hands. Um, you can turn your trim switches into a cyclical, a rotary switch, where every time you click to the left or every time you click to the right, the channel bumps a little bit further along. It's really great for like emulating knobs like this, except this knob can't keep turning. Uh, and trip switches, especially if you have a TBS Tango, aren't really, you have momentary switches there, but you don't actually have knobs. It's a really, really cool thing that shows off some of the functions of OpenTX and HTX. And if you enjoyed this video, I think you're going to love that one. There's a card on screen that'll take you to it. Thank you so much for watching. Happy flying.